Senator Warren, thank you so much for joining us, and especially at this moment in American politics when I can say joyously we at least are talking about issues of fairness, about yes. a livable wage. But I have yes. to ask you, on the heels of unemployment insurance failing to reach accord in the Senate, how powerful is this narrative really going to be in terms of shaping legislation? You know, I, I think this is still very powerful. This is the moment when we really have to start fighting back and showing the Republicans it's not going to work just to continue to obstruct, obstruct, obstruct. This issue on unemployment insurance is really not hard. We need to extend unemployment insurance. We have done this many times in the past. We did it during the Bush administration when unemployment gets too high. We do it for those who need it most. The Democrats proposed this. The Republicans said, oh, yeah, we want to do this, but you need to pay for it. We said you never needed pay-fors in the past, how it is you're going to pay for it right now. But we sat down. We came up with pay-fors that we could live with. We said we've got to pay for it. And then they said, oh, well, no, actually, we don't mean that. We want to do some more amendments. We want to change this. We want to change that. Are you kidding me? We have people out there who are suffering. We have people who worked hard all their lives, who played by the rules, and now they got knocked out during a terrible economic downturn. They can't get back to a job. They're applying. They're working for it. And all of a sudden, the Republicans are saying, just cut them off. Well, just that, leave them with nothing. And that's precisely the point, I think. I mean, it's not a mystery that 1.3 million Americans are hurting. It's not a mystery that unemployment assistance has a stimulative effect on the economy. Economists say that it does. So when you reach this point with Republicans and they back down and they back out and there's a human cost, I mean, what do you say to your colleagues in the upper chamber? Is there a palpable sense of anger today, given what has transpired in the last 24 hours? You know, I think there's just an enormous frustration and really just a sense of being appalled. It's the only word I know. It's that you really want to look at people on the other side and say, you're willing to do this over politics? You're really willing to cut these people off, to leave them with no money, to put food on the table, to keep a roof over their heads, to take care of their children? And right now, the Republicans are so caught in playing political games at every single turn, at making sure that everything the president does to try to get the economy back on track, everything we all do to try to support hardworking families gets blocked by the Republicans. You know, I got to tell you, this is partly about the inside game. That is, we got to talk with each other, Democrats to Democrats and across the aisle to Republicans. But this is about all of America. This is about America saying to the Republican Party, you can't keep blocking every Everything that moves this country forward. This has to stop. Senator, on that note of working across the aisle, you unveiled last week with Senator Tom Coburn the Truth in Settlements Act. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, I mean, to those of us on the sidelines, it's amazing that Democrats and Republicans, and really I'll put the onus on Republicans here, that Republicans can agree with Democrats on anything, and especially something like this, which is about oversight, which in many cases in conservative circles is an anathema. How did you, how did you reach this agreement? How was the deal done? So remember what this deal is about. You know, we've got all of these regulations out there that should be enforced. And the principal tool that the regulatory agencies use is when they find somebody breaking the law, they do a settlement with them. And they give a big headline for this settlement, how many zillions of dollars it brought in, what the agreement is. But what they don't do is they don't tell you what's down in the fine print. They don't tell you that it may be tax deductible, so you, the taxpayer, are picking up a big chunk of this settlement. Sometimes they totally hide the settlements. They just announce the headline and keep all the details confidential. So I talked with Tom Coburn about this. He's long time been big on transparency in government. And this is an area where the two of us agree. We need for the government, if it's going to stand up and say, here's the settlement, if you're so proud of that top line number, then you've got to make the details available so the rest of us, those of us in Congress, but also the public generally, can look at it and say whether we think it's such a great deal after all or not. Senator, I want to ask you, as we talk about uh, handouts and transparency and accountability and oversight, the issue of corporations and their increasing power, uh, before we let you go, the, this notion of 
corporate personhood is something that the Supreme Court is dealing with. At the same time that we're talking about corporate handouts, Washington State announced today that they may give nine billion more. They've given nine billion in tax breaks. Going, they may give them more. If there is a priority for the Republican Party at this point, it seems like it is actually corporations. They, they are literally following lock, in lockstep with that uh, Mitt Romney saying corporations are people too. And one has to wonder what happened to people? Are they not people too? We are, it seems like, on a trend line in this country where corporate personhood and the health and the strength of corporations is being conflated with the health and the strength of the American worker and Americans in general. How do we stop that? How do we recalibrate and get the goalposts back towards the center? So Alex, I think you've got the real heart of it. I think that's the fundamental issue right here in Washington. Who does the government really work for? Does it work for the rich and the powerful, for the big corporations, or does it work for real people, for families who work hard and play by the rules? And right now, we've got a game that's rigged. It's working for the big corporations. It's just not working for families. Unemployment insurance is one example of that. But look at the sequestration as another example. We cut Head Start. We cut Meals on Wheels, the things that affect real people, things that put people out of work. And yet, if you already had your big, juicy tax break, your oil subsidies, your ability to move money overseas, if you already had that, remember, it didn't get affected by the sequestration. It was just as big and as rich as ever. At every level, we just have these tilts in the government so that the rich, the powerful, the big corporations, man, they keep raking it in. And families just keep sliding further and further down. We've gotten as hard as we can get on this, as close as we can get on this. We have got, got to pull this back. That is our task right now, right here in this city and in this country. The battle continues. Senator Elizabeth Warren, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.